Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Marquis, and I just wanted to take a minute and talk to you about vitamin D. Vitamin D has become one of my all-time favorite micronutrients, and in fact, it's not classically a micronutrient, it's actually a pro-hormone because of its varied applications and utilities in the human body. Vitamin D is thought of as something that we can take, but in reality, our body makes it. And that's one of the conflicts that sometimes people have in thinking that they have adequate load. But when we do blood tests, invariably, I find that most people are too low. In fact, in the region that I live in, which is almost always sunny, universally and literally epidemically, patients are clinically deficient here in our county. Why, you might ask? Well, vitamin D is actually latitude dependent in terms of how much of the active frequency of light or wavelength of light that you're actually receiving and your body then can convert. So in the county that we live in, in California, it takes between late May and early August to have your window of opportunity for vitamin D. After that time or before that time, you could be buck naked outside and you're not gonna get any D in your body because there's very little UVB access. And then another thought about that is, like my glasses, they have plastic lenses. If you have glasses on, or any type of uh, sunscreen, even like SPF 15, or if you have long hair, that's not one of my problems, you're going to not be able to acquire adequate UVB rays, and this is where 60% of your photoreceptors for UVB rays exist. So like SPF 15, it blocks out 99% of it. These plastic lenses, the UVB rays can't penetrate. And there's been some interesting studies done on that, differentiating UVB rays versus UVA. And some of the studies, just too quickly, one was done on individuals who drive a lot, so like truck drivers, and they found that their cancer, in, or skin cancer on the left arm, was twice the incidence of that on the right arm. And that's because the window would block out selectively the UVB, not making vitamin D, which would be protective against the cancer, and it selectively allowed the UVA. And they did another study on that very similar, but it was in office buildings. And although people covet the, uh, the window side of most buildings, that's actually where twice the cancer incident was for people who had windows rather than those on the inside of the office. Now, I'm not a strong advocate for sitting in an office for long hours anyways, but just an interesting tidbit on what sunlight can do and the impact it can have on your body. So coming back to this whole concept of vitamin D, it's made in the body via the sunlight, which connotes that you've got these light receptors on every cell in the body, and in fact you do. And, and that I'm gonna talk about in a whole other video because you can actually um, capitalize on that for other purposes. So that's a stay tuned thing. But when vitamin D is made in the body, you actually have to um, sweat it out so it comes to the surface of the skin and then have time enough for it to be resorbed back into the circulatory process. When that happens, now you've got UVB, excuse me, vitamin D from your UVB. Now, when an individual goes through that process and their blood levels start to increase, it starts to do a number of wonderful things. It's an immune modulator. It works along with glutathione and nitric oxide to be kind of the three legs to your immune balancing stool. It cuts the risk and incidence of all cancers by 50%. Literally, the most cost-effective way that you can protect yourself against cancer is knowing your vitamin D levels. On that scale of 30 to 100 nanograms, we like to see people between 60 and 90. Now, how do you get there, you might say? Well, it's gonna depend on you, your genetics, and your geographic region that you're living in, if you're hoping to get it from the sun. In our area that we live in, because we have that window between late May and early August to get sunlight, for anybody who's not out regularly or after and before that time, they simply need to supplement. The dosing that I found in this region needs to be on average on a low of about 5,000 units a day to a high of about 10,000 units a day. And then that brings up a whole nother conversation of other micronutrients that you might need along with it. Vitamin K is a very important one. So when you're sourcing D, I encourage people to have K in that same formula. Things to avoid when you're looking at vitamin D in a bottle, please avoid soy fillers. 
If you turn that thing around and you see it's packed in soybean oil, just put it back down and go for something else. Having continual exposure to the soy actually becomes a counterproductive process for your own immune system. So vitamin D helps to fight infection, helps to protect our neurology, so it helps with cognitive decline, um, it helps with fast twitch muscle fibers, it's integral in making the musculotendinous junction repair around bones. So think about people with plantar fasciitis, people with chronic tendinitis, uh, people that are healing poorly in their musculoskeletal system. Many of these folks, if not most, if you test their blood, you're going to find that they're really low in D. When you look at that uh, scale of 30 to 100, invariably, if I see somebody below 30, they're going to feel different when they get it above. Sometimes it's cognitively because it's a huge one for depression as well as pain. And I've already mentioned the immune modulation. So get your D tested. I'm a strong advocate for everyone knowing what your D levels are. Don't just take it willy-nilly. And then after you start taking it, find out about two months later what your new D levels are. Don't take vitamin D just before you take your blood draw. Make sure you give yourself about four to five days of taking nothing when you go in for your blood draw and you'll get a better chance of seeing what your actual levels are. Vitamin D is fat soluble, so it stays in the system for about a week. Some people opt to take a single weekly dose and that works. But um, you're gonna have to find out what works best for you. Testing always is a, a, a good idea because it's gonna give you your baseline and show you how your supplementation is working. And then once you get a good rhythm of that and you've tested two or three times, you know. And it's just rinse, wash, repeat after that. Get your information, take your D, and have a great day.